Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll start a new journey, a league expansion video. This will be episode one of hopefully many. And let's just get started with the expansion draft itself. Now, before we start, I just want to let you know that I've manually protected players because 2K has a tendency of letting go of players like Drew Holiday. And I've also seen players like Trey Young get waived before which just doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, let's enter the draft and we are blessed with the first overall selection. Now there's definitely a lot of very intriguing options available, Lonzo Ball being the best player available at an 80 overall, but I do like Aaron Wiggins a bit more. He's more reliable when it comes to health. He's coming off a very decent season with OKC where he put up seven points, two and a half rebounds, one assist, almost two stocks, and very nice efficiency. He also played less than 16 minutes per night and is a 79 overall player, 25 years of age. He comes in with five badges already, some of them being gold, and he's on a very team-friendly deal. He'll be locked up for the next five plus years and will be a free agent in 2028, and that's also with a team option. With a B- potential, Aaron Wiggins, welcome to the Baltimore Panthers. The other expansion team is the Seattle Supersonics, and they go ahead and select Lonzo Ball from the Chicago Bulls, 80 overall player, and Isaiah Jackson from the Pacers, 76. Definitely a very good lap threat already to begin their draft. The way this draft thing works is once a player is selected, you can no longer select a player from the same team. So a lot of different options already eliminated early on. Now, that doesn't really hamper my plans. I, I want to go with Bruce Brown here. He's a very good, valuable role player, uh, 28 years old. So he's still in the middle of his prime or entering his prime and had a very solid season with the uh, Toronto Raptors and also the Indiana Pacers. He also has a very solid mid-range shot at an 86 the three-point shot is a bit weak, but uh, his defense makes up for it, and so does his overall versatility. He's on an expiring deal, making $23 million, and a six-year pro with six badges. He also has a bunch of personality badges as well, stuff that will just allow him to be a better mentor for this team. So with my next selection, Bruce Brown, welcome to the Baltimore Panthers. Taking a look at the talent available, I think Marvin Bagley is a bargain. 77 overall, 25 year old on an expiring $12 million deal. A 6 foot 10 forward center that can run either position flawlessly. A lot of B's in his game and also an A rebounder. Unfortunately, not the player that he was projected to be. I think he'll make a good impact on this team. So with my next selection, I want to bring in Marvin Bagley, the third to the Baltimore Panthers. The Seattle Supersonics select Kevin Love and Killian Hayes, knocking out the Miami Heat and also the Brooklyn Nets. I was planning on taking Ben Simmons sometime in this draft, but um, it is what it is. Killian Hayes gets knocked out first and Kevin Love, a solid player from the Miami Heat. I had my eyes on... Um, not say a little, but unfortunately, the Sonics beat me to a Heat player first. While taking a look at some of the players, I noticed Ryan Dunn, 71 overall, 21-year-old player, uh, rookie, 28th overall pick from the most recent draft from Virginia. Six foot eight forward Ryan Dunn comes in with very versatile defense, above average on both perimeter and post defense. He's also a very solid rebounder for his position, above average at that. However, his offensive game, to put it lightly, is very mediocre. Uh, he does have good athleticism. Unfortunately, not the best IQ or potential, but I think his defense alone makes him a prospect worth taking a risk on. He's also on a very team-friendly $2.5 million, 2 plus 2 deal, so welcome to the team. The next player I want to consider taking is Tumani Kamara, uh, 6 foot 7 forward from the Portland Trailblazers. He had a very solid rookie season where he put up 7-5 and very solid defensive numbers in the minutes that he played. 
uh, I think he's definitely a player worth taking uh, here at this point of the draft. He's also not very old at only 24 years old, a bit older than a average second year player, but still very solid three point shooting and also solid versatile defense uh, for him. He also has an A uh, potential and seven overall badges. Most of them are unfortunately bronze, but still seven badges is seven badges. He also has a work ethic badge that will definitely allow him to progress faster. So with my next pick, Tumani Kamara, welcome to the Baltimore Panthers. The Sonics go ahead and select Kyle Anderson and Lonnie Walker the fourth, knocking out the Golden State Warriors and also the Boston Celtics. Even though I had already taken Marvin Bagley the third, who was a big man, Paul Reed caught my eye. He comes in with 11 badges, some of them even being gold, and he has a work ethic badge. He comes in as a very versatile player, B's across the board, some D's, but that's at playmaking and perimeter defense at his position that doesn't really matter a lot. He does have a 76 outside shot, which is above average, and he had a very solid season with the Sixers last season. 7.6 rebounds and almost two stocks. Um, shot 36% from deep in the absence of Joel Embiid. He did start as well, where he was a very solid role player for the Sixers. Welcome to the team, Paul Reed. And with my next selection, I definitely want to target a shooting guard. Caleb Houston from the Orlando Magic is somebody that I already had my eyes on earlier. A B-plus three-point shooter with an A-minus perimeter defense. Three badges for the 21-year-old foot eight shooting guard forward. I think he could definitely be a very decent player for the future. Uh, like I mentioned, he does have a solid 3 and D potential already at a a very solid three-point shot as well. Three badges, all of them being defensive-oriented badges. Um, he does have that work ethic badge as well. I'm trying to draft a team full of dogs that can develop their play styles. Caleb Houston, welcome to the team joining the Baltimore Panthers. The Sonics with their next two selections take Luke Kennard and Kenyon Martin Jr. knocking out the Sixers and the Memphis Grizzlies. My next selection will probably be Jaden Hardy. He comes in with five offensive-oriented badges, a very solid scorer, seven points per game, two rebounds, one and a half assists, although he does lack a lot on the defensive side of the court. Um, 73 overall at this point of the draft is not a bad player to have. He does come in overall B offense, but the defense is very lackluster. This six foot three, 22 year old guard is definitely a player worth taking a risk on with an A potential, five badges, and a very good offensive game. He's also on a minimum contract, so why the hell not? As you can see, his badges, some of them silver, and guess what? He does have that work ethic badge. The next player I wanted to take is a versatile shooting guard forward, and Terry Shannon Jr., fits into that role perfectly. Comes in as a B offensive player. He has a B plus perimeter defense, B minus playmaking, good physical athlete. He does lack in the IQ department and he is a 24 year old rookie, a bit on the older side of things for a first year player, but still I think he could be a very decent player if developed properly. Uh, could come in and be an instant offense type of player that is versatile all around. He does lack the potential, but at this point of the draft, uh, beggars can be choosers. So with my next selection, Terrence Shannon Jr., welcome to the team. The Supersonics' next two selections are Marshawn Buchamp and David Roddy, knocking out the Milwaukee Bucks and also the Atlanta Hawks. Pacom Dadier is definitely a player that is very intriguing. A 19-year-old prospect with a B-3 and a B perimeter defense. Unfortunately, he has zero badges, but is on a minimum contract for the next 2 plus 2. He's also a 69 overall, a bit lower on that end of the overall thing, but I think he could definitely develop into a very solid player. He also has a B-plus potential. So let's just take the swing on the 19-year-old rookie from the New York Knicks, 
Hakom Dadie. Welcome to the team. With my next player, I plan on taking another center. This will be my third center. He comes in with 13 badges, former 20 point per game scorer from the Houston Rockets and now the Los Angeles Lakers, Christian Wood. Welcome to the team. The Sonics select Blake Wesley and Jacques Landale from the Spurs and the Houston Rockets. Um, I didn't really plan on taking either of those two guys, so it's okay. With my next two selections, I want to bring in veteran presence to help the younger guys on the team develop. Nicholas Batum is a guy that caught my eye. A 16-year pro from the 2008 draft comes in with seven badges. Welcome to the team. And with my next selection, I'll bring in a former All-Star, DeAndre Jordan, a championship center with five badges. Uh, definitely a welcomed addition to this team. Welcome to the Baltimore Panthers, DeAndre Jordan. The Supersonics selected Cody Martin from the Hornets and Javante Green from the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, it's two very solid players, just a bit too expensive for my liking. This will also be my last selection, and I have my eyes on Johnny Juzang, 23-year-old UCLA forward from the Utah Jazz. He's coming off a very solid season where he shot the ball 42%. Unfortunately, it was on a small sample size. He does have a B three-point shot, and that's about it. Being a 69 overall um, limits his game a lot, um, but he could potentially be a decent player for the future. Who knows? With that selection, that ends both of our drafts, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our team. Our best player will be Aaron Wiggins, a 79 overall. Brooks Brown right behind him with a 78 and Bagley with a 77. Our point guards, Brown and Hardy, uh, definitely a very good combination of players. Caleb Houston and Terrence Shannon Jr. are shooting guards, very young there. Dunn, Pattier, and Zhu Zhang are our small forwards on this team at the moment, all under the age of 24. Wiggins, Batum, and Kamara are our power forwards at the moment. I do plan on changing Dunn and Kamara's positions uh, Dunn will be a third string power forward and Kamara will be the starting small forward on this team. And our center position, our most stacked position in my opinion, Bagley, Reed, Wood, and Jordan. During the draft, we only have 14 players on the team, which allows me to bring in one extra player. And uh, um, there's definitely a lot of different options to consider one of the uh, more uh well-rounded players is Markel Fultz, but because of his high contract value and also his injury history, I think I'll steer clear from him for now. Another player that's similar to Markel Fultz is Jalen Noel, a former Minnesota Timberwolf player. Uh, similar attributes, but not as good as Fultz. I think I'll just keep looking. Six foot four, though, not bad at all. Ultimately, I decided to give James Booknight a contract offer, 24-year-old uh, player. Welcome to the Baltimore Panthers. I just want to take a shot at a younger player, and hopefully he can develop into the offensive player that he was meant to be with Charlotte. He comes in with a B-minus three-point shot, a B playmaking, and B defense as well. As mentioned before, Ryan Dunn will be a primary power forward and a secondary small forward in favor of Tumane Kamara being a primary small forward and a secondary power forward. That allows me to balance out my starting lineup with Tumane Kamara being the starting small forward and uh, Dunn will be a backup power forward in favor of Wiggins starting at the moment. Our centers are also very versatile. Most of our centers can run the power forward flawlessly and we could even run certain lineups where we have Wiggins at the two uh, Kamara at the three, Bagley at the four, and probably Reed or Wood at the center position, manning the middle. And of course, we have Brown bringing up the ball at the point guard position. For now, I'll just resort to starting Reed and bringing Bagley off the bench just because I want to limit the amount of wins I get. I also played around with shot tendencies a little bit, making sure guys that are used to being role players, 
are more accustomed to taking more shots. Guys like Aaron Wiggins, I want him taking more three-point shots as he has an 87 three-point shot. I want him taking a lot of threes. And basically the complete opposite for the rest of my team. Some of my guys had a 60, 70, or even a 90 uh, three-point shooting tendency at a low 70 and even at a 60 overall uh, rating, which hampered their efficiency a lot. I don't see changing tendency as cheating because this is me making a coaching change. I'm going up to the player. I'm telling Christian Wood to take less threes and more inside shots. I feel like that's realistic coaching rather than just cheating the game. I'm going to be running a 13-man lineup where every player will at least get more than 10 minutes per night. And let's get started with our first ever game against a technical crosstown rival with the Washington Wizards. Seems to be a very close game so far. Uh, we're holding on to a solid lead. They come back in the fourth, but we ultimately win. This is what the box score looked like for our game. Uh, Bruce Brown led us in scoring with 17, 3, and 2 with a block as well. Very efficient shooting. Caleb Houston, perfect night for him. 5 for 5 from the field and 3 for 3 from deep, although he did have 3 fouls and 3 turnovers. But for now, for the 21-year-old, I'll focus on the positives instead. Tumani Kamara, very solid game, 12 and 9 with 50-50-50 shooting. Uh, he also had 3 offensive rebounds as well to go alongside his solid game. Paul Reed, very solid game. Jaden Hardy off the bench 12 in just 12 minutes. Wiggins struggled offensively 4 for 10 is not the greatest thing out there given his track record on efficiency. He also had 3 offensive rebounds so I cannot complain much. Christian with 11 points. Bagley with 8 and 12 off the bench. Daddy Ye, 8 points on 4 for 6 shooting. Shannon Jr. with 7. Booknight with 6. Zhujang 0 for 3. And Ryan Dunn 0 for 2. He did have a block though, which is not bad at all. Before we make our home debut game, I want to show you the jerseys of my team. This is what the home jersey looks like. A slight hint of purple on the front and a very beautiful dark purple on the sides. I feel like that's a very good colorway. I would definitely buy a jersey like this. The away jersey. A dark purple on the front and light purple on the sides. Kind of like a lavender color. Very pretty looking jersey. Um, I would definitely consider buying this jersey as well. And wait till you see the alternate jersey. Nothing too special. Purple on purple action with dark purple on the sides and light purple on the front. All right, this will be our second game. And I'll just jump on the court just to show you what's going on. I will not usually play games, but I just decided to play one quarter worth of basketball where I got absolutely spanked. I was losing by 10 points, but hey, the results speak for itself. Let's see how the courts translate. So here's our court, and as you can see, I'm bringing up the ball and absolutely suck on the offensive side of things. I almost get the ball turned over and get drawn the foul. Yeah, after the first quarter, I simcasted the game, and then I jumped in late in the fourth quarter. And as you can see, we blew them out. The Toronto Raptors, thank you for our first ever home win. I kick it out and take a contested jack up three, ruining Bruce Brown's percentages from deep. Uh, but it doesn't matter. We get the win. Here's what the box score looked like. Bruce Brown, again on top, 18.7 rebounds, three assists, and three stocks. Bagley off the bench 14 and 8. Christian Wood off the bench again 14, 6 and 3. Houston had another great shooting night, 13 points for him. Tumani Kamara 12, 7 and 3. Uh, Hardy had a really good game off the bench. And for some reason, I don't like how uh, Aaron Wiggins underperformed this game. 3 for 16, really, really poor shooting but we still managed to blow them out. Ryan Dunn, one for one. He caught an amazing lob, uh, and it was, a, it was a pretty nice highlight. The, the lob pass. Oh, and I converted. Let's go. Ryan Dunn getting an alley-oop attempt. It was the smallest 
smallest green window, but hey, he gets up there for that. Thank you for watching episode one of the Baltimore Panthers Realistic League Expansion Rebuild. Um, if you want to watch more episodes, please let me know and I'll have it out as soon as possible. Peace.